Hey everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. I wanted to talk to you about um, my experience purchasing some pre-owned luxury ready to wear. Uh, if some of you have been following me for a while, you know that I have grown to appreciate and love uh, luxury ready to wear, particularly from Chanel. I do purchase their ready to wear uh, both in season, brand new from the boutique, uh, and also on sale. <laughs> so I've done a, fun, a bunch of those videos and a lot of you enjoy them because it's nice to see like different pieces and how they look on different body types. Uh, Chanel is a fashion brand and the beauty of Chanel's ready to wear is that there is so much that can be done to custom fit your body. It is an I mean, it is their strength, it's their art, it's um, something that the brand is, uh, this is what they really are proud of, okay? Um, not, I mean, it, it, definitely their haute couture is something that is definitely really, and one day, like, I, I dream of owning a piece and having that experience, but I, I really love the ready-to-wear. Now, Ready to wear has been told, like, has been said by many as being a poor investment, meaning that if you go to resell um, a ready to wear piece, that you won't get nearly as much money for it um, as you would, say, selling like a handbag. And I think the way luxury has moved forward, we've moved from the idea of luxury resale value from influencing our luxury purchase decisions. But still, it's nice to know that hey like if you grow out of a piece or if you don't like a piece anymore because everybody's tastes change um, your lifestyle changes etc that you can move forward by selling it to somebody else and using that money to fund another piece that better suits your collection and your needs ready to wear definitely is something that yeah the resale value for the most part is not um, not the greatest because the the, the market that would be interested in purchasing said ready to wear piece is going to be very narrow compared to say a bag because ready to wear is very personal. Um, there's a sizing um, variable as well as you know color and style um, and budget, right? So you won't have as many people racing to buy your ready to wear piece as you would with bags. But there are certain ready to wear pieces that people actually pay more than retail for because they go crazy over it or they really, because it is so desired um, and they'll pay, they're willing to pay more than retail or people charge more than retail. It's, the question is whether you can, you know, the question is whether it'll sell at that price, but um, people do, people do sell some of the ready to wear items for above retail. So uh, I had a look, I was looking for this piece for a while. I did purchase a ready to wear piece that also, uh, I'll link to that video from The Real Real. And I had a pretty good experience because I had it altered and it fits me perfectly. The, the, the garment is really nice. And so I'm a bit more comfortable with purchasing pre-owned um, luxury ready to wear from uh, a reseller provided that it's in good condition or brand new, okay? Um, and vintage pieces I haven't ventured into, but you know, because these are collections that I'm familiar with, I can, I know what they are. Um, but because you can take it to Chanel and have it altered, yes, you can, you'll pay for it, but in a way that indirectly authenticates it. And also, it's unlikely that a ready-to-wear piece would be replicated. Uh, it's more, um, likely that a handbag that's popular would be replicated okay ready to wear is not for everyone and you don't have as much of a market in order to fake these items so i'm pretty confident when i do purchase this so this is my second pre-owned uh ready to wear piece um and uh i hope you guys like it so i was searching on just randomly I was searching on Bestier Collective, which is a uh, resale site that's been under some hot water from, with a variety of luxury YouTubers. And this kind of led me to the site, to be honest, um, because there are questions about credibility, there's questions about uh, authenticity, etc. So the way Bestier Collective works is it's a platform for you and me to go on there and post our luxury pieces for sale we have a price and Bestia Collective takes a commission. It's kind of like an eBay for uh, ready for luxury items. And um, Bestia Collection Collective would uh, 
charge a commission if that was to sell. The way it works is, let's say I'm selling a handbag. Um, I post that handbag for $7,000, let's say. And then a buyer is interested in it, they're watching it. It may not sell, maybe I drop the price to 6,500. That buyer would probably look at other listings of similar items or the same items and say, hey, this item sold for 5K, I'm willing to offer you 5,500. You can chat with each other. You might come to a deal and say, fine, I'm gonna sell this to you for 5,500. Agree that, that uh, client then put, makes the purchase through Bestia Collective, you pay via credit card, um, and then I as a seller have a certain number of days where I have to ship the item to Vestier Collective. I don't ship it directly to the buyer. Vestier Collective would then collect the item, they would authenticate it supposedly <laughs> and check that yes, the indeed, indeed the item that I sent is in the box and it's all there. It's not like I'm shipping an empty box. And then the buyer uh, also pays a fee, a buyer's fee for this process for Vestia Collective to check everything. So that is um, in addition to the price that you agree to. The buyer also pays taxes and duties um, for a lot of things. Now you'll get to what I'm think what I'm saying about duties. So um, that's how it works. Uh, so all in all, buyer might have said, okay, 5,500 plus tax and duties. They might end up just paying 7K together versus 7k plus all those fees and I also pay commission so Vestia makes that money for coordinating that sale. Um, so I was looking through and I saw this jacket and I'm going to show you this jacket. This. So this is from I believe Virginie's very first collection, Cruise 2020 uh, or was it Cruise or Pre-Spring? Oh gosh. I'm gonna have to verify, I'm so sorry. I used to remember all of these. I'll look at the show and I'll, I'll put it in the subtitle here. Um, but this is the Emily in Paris jacket. And if any of you guys know, I already have this jacket in a navy blue that I purchased from the Chanel boutique. And that's, I actually purchased it on sale. And you know, when you go for sales, you just have a, you just look at a wide selection of sizes because yes, you may get your size, but then if you don't, you can alter it. So I got like a 46 in that size, it was huge. Um, but they tailored it down to me and I'll, I will insert a video clip of me wearing it. Um, and I had it done really fitted, okay? I really like that jacket. Um, so, but I always like, I really like the pop of color of the green. So I was always looking for it. And like people were charging like over 8K for this jacket. And um, so I was looking at listings on Vestier and I saw the jacket I had, uh, bargained the jacket down uh, via the chat. The seller agreed and um, this is being sold by a consignment store actually in the Netherlands called Unique Designer Pieces uh, and I'll insert their page uh, in the description box below. When I would click checkout it would charge duties and I'm like well I shouldn't pay duties on something that's made in France as a Canadian. I'm paying sales tax. And so um, what I ended up doing was I'm like, wait a second, this is a store. So I just Googled them and I found their website. And the same jacket was listed on their online store website um, for a lot less. So I actually paid half of what I would have paid on Vestier. Now, I'm not saying do this with every single listing, but hey, if I can save some money, why not? Um, and I purchased it directly from their store. Yes, I would not have had the authentication service that Vestia would have done. But again, their authentication service is under question by a lot of people. They don't know if it's any good. Um, Super Jacob and a bunch of creators did some videos on this. And um, yeah, so, and, and I already have this jacket, so I'm not even concerned about authenticity. Like it is, like I know this jacket is authentic, okay? I have the same jacket in a different color. And it's unlikely this would be faked. So it came with um, it came with the original tags. I actually cut them off because I already wore this. Um, it came with the original tags. So the person who oh yes, it is cruise. This is the item item code. Okay. So um, this is from uh, 2020 cruise. It was on the runway, and uh, yeah, so I got it, and uh, I paid in euros, 
and I when I got it I just was charged uh, duties sorry and when it came in um, I was assessed sales tax which is 13% in my province there were no duties on this it was just the sales tax that I was um, going to be charged so the price when they sent it to me uh, they removed the VAT because I'm not European because I'm not a citizen of the EU so they sold me the VAT free price and then I paid the sales tax on top. So, lovely jacket. I think I have a picture of me wearing it, so I'll insert it. This is a size 42, which is perfect uh, for me right now. And um, these are the buttons, and I can definitely have this altered to fit me better in the future. Uh, I'm going to wait because I am on a weight loss journey after baby, so I'm going to wait until I alter it, but I can still wear it right now. And it's perfect. This length is lovely. So there's a picture I'm going to uh, share with Lily Collins in Emily in Paris wearing this jacket, more like a coat. I honestly don't know what size this girl is wearing because I was looking up her height. Yes, yeah, she's a very petite in terms like she's very skinny um totally amazing looking and but her she's not that like she's not short i think she's like five four i'm five six so there's not a huge difference in height but this jacket looks enormous on her like it looks like it's longer it's more oversized so i have a feeling that um when they did the costume design they probably you know usually they'll source pieces that are you know from a few seasons back because this show was released after right and um, maybe they had like a size 50 lying around that nobody bought and so the show had purchased it maybe on sale or something i don't know and then just tailored it so that it's narrower but you get the length when you have a larger size so i think that's what happened because when i the models on the web on the runway for the show as well as other people who have this jacket steph shojai who's on instagram um she has this jacket and i think there's a post with her where i'll try to find a, a picture of her wearing it and it's it comes up to the same length as me which is kind of like just below the hips so it's not like a knee length or a mid thigh length coat but yeah i'll insert that photo it looks amazing on on her so so the next purchase i made was from vestia collective so i purchased via vestia because it was an independent seller there were these belts on the runway for this collection and i have two jackets from this collection now this would be my third and um, I was searching for that belt actually and they were, they were all sold out. And I'm like, you know, I would really like that belt because it would complete the look. And I found it. And again, I bargained them down a little bit. I did have to pay duties on this because I didn't buy it directly from Europe. Apparently when I asked Vestier, they said, well, because it gets shipped to their hub in the US, and then it's coming to me via the US, that's why it automatically puts duties at checkout and there's nothing they can do about it, which kind of sucked. But this is the box. Now this belt, again, it came with the original box. It even came with the shopping bag. I already opened it, but so it's legit. Like it's not, and you know, I'm willing to do this for pieces that I can never find anymore and as somebody who's bought a lot from the boutique directly, um, one or two pieces, I really don't mind buying secondhand, right? So I have actually the copy of the receipt that the seller included, and it has the dust bag, and in here, this is the belt that I'm talking about. So this is from Cruise. I actually have the tag for this belt. I'm going to look for it because in one of my jackets, I guess at Chanel it was modeled with the belt and the tag for this was actually in the pocket of one of those jackets and I saved it for reference purposes if I wanted to find it. So I even have the tag for it even though it doesn't necessarily belong to this piece. But this is the chain belt. So it's like a dull aged gold and then it's leather and I believe these were done in fabric as well leather and then it has a metal cc at the end and then same on this side and the way that you would wear it is you um this is actually size medium so it's flexible because you can tie i'm just going to quickly do a little um so you tie it around your waist like this that's how 
this would look, okay? So I found it. I found the belt, okay? Um, so yeah, so this, um, I'm, I can't wait to wear because I have three jackets now from this collection and on the runway it was displayed with this belt and I can use it for other things and especially because it's such a flexible size, I can wear this with other items and you know, it's not like a, again, especially if you're between sizes, uh, it's nice to have a belt that you can just tie. And actually the most recent um, fall winter collection on the runway, they had similar tie belts like this only I believe the center part is like a bunch of chains and it's Chanel. I can't, and the, sorry, yeah, it's a bunch of chains, fine chains, and then the leather tabs say Chanel on them. I don't know what the current price of those are. I can probably ask um, and insert that information, but if anybody wants to pre-order those or look out for those when the collection does uh, get released, then you have a similar belt, but I just I just love that I got it from the same collection. So yeah, that's my pre-owned shopping experience. When you buy pre-owned consignment, it doesn't necessarily mean that the item has been used. Like I said, that green jacket was in excellent condition. The tags were still attached. So it's like nobody used it. And the belt was definitely pre-owned, but I don't even think the person used it because I don't even see evidence of like the leather being stretched when it's being tied and they had everything so they probably just sold it so yeah that's my experience so i guess that's the way to do it like you can you know you have to err on the side of caution i think if you're going to be buying pre-owned probably bags be very very careful just because of the super fakes that are out now but when it comes to ready to wear and things like this um you can actually get a pretty good deal and i wouldn't be it's less likely to be replicated that's what i'm saying and you'll probably find a piece from a previous collection that you missed out on and chanel um can order fabric they can order extra buttons um they can or they can tailor down they can open up like there's so much that can be done um another question that somebody had so my melania jacket that i unboxed that i purchased from the real real uh that didn't come with the tags or the spare buttons and I had asked if I can order the spare buttons because God forbid a button gets pulled off especially with a baby now who likes to pick up things if a button gets lost then what am I gonna do right because you know they only archive these bits and bobs for a certain number of years back and um, yeah they were able to order the buttons from Paris for me and they charge $80 a button Canadian so just so you know <laughs> that would be the charge so i just I, I was like you know what it's worth it i'll just take the spare button just like how they come with the tags with the um jackets you usually get oh gosh where did i put it but yeah <laughs> the the little sachet that comes with the the buttons you get the large button for the front and then you get the button usually for the cuff on the side or hooks or whatever the closure is and um yeah so i ordered those as a just in case, God forbid in the future I lose a button then I'm not having to change all the buttons and it's worth it for me to spend that money now so I have that sense of security for that jacket which I really do enjoy wearing. So yes, that's my experience. Uh, it was really good. Um, unique designer pieces, uh, I'll have their website linked below. Uh, they do have a number of other things. So if you wanted to take a look uh, and just Oh, keep tabs on the website. They don't know that I'm doing this and it's definitely not sponsored by them But I thought I'd give them a shout out because they did They the the sale was coordinated so quickly like it shipped so quickly and I got it like within a couple of days And um, I'm really really happy. It even came with the hanger um, I don't think I I don't think I got a desk bag with it. I don't think I can't remember if I did Sorry, I don't think I got a garment bag with it. I don't remember if I did um, But it doesn't matter because I have a number of garment bags and I hardly use them. I, I just hang my jackets like that. But yes, let me know if you have any questions um, and uh, let me know of your pre-owned uh, buying experiences for ready to wear. I hope this video inspires you to check out pre-owned websites for luxury ready to wear. We have some local ones, we have some online. Dip your feet in the luxury ready to wear world. I actually have an unboxing that is long overdue from 24P. I have a number of pieces from that collection. I actually really like that collection and I will share that with you whenever I get a chance to film again. <laughs> Take care. Bye.